people have done research on what's referred to as solar radiation or albedo modification up high, high in the, in the stratosphere. So people like David Keith and others who are, have been studying this My guess is that once people, you know, if the world did start to do it and there weren't any obvious bad effects, probably it would become more of a normalized part of climate policy and less of a high profile thing. It would just become part of the woodwork. Start this intervention, you can have a rapid decline in the temperature, and once you stop adding those tiny particles in the stratosphere, boom, you're right back up to the uh, carbon dioxide that you have accumulating in the atmosphere, acidifying the oceans and other effects. It's a very rapid. So lots of times you're talking about maybe hundreds of years of doing this type of activity, and they last in the atmosphere about a couple years. So, so you have to um, think about all the consequences of doing this work. My number one thing I was going to talk about is actually the committee's number one, the National Academy Committee number one recommendation. Uh, if this very quick discussion here doesn't scare you one, it should. Uh, and, and it should almost scare us into really thinking about this as risk management. When it does come down to climate intervention, and again, I think Brenda talked about this, there's sort of these two large classes. One is how do you remove carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere, primarily carbon dioxide. The methane, although very powerful, has a half-life of just a few decades, and it's going to come out by itself if you stop putting it in. Uh, the other part is this albedo modification. So one way we've kind of described this is, you know, we've got a lot of trash right now. Carbon dioxide removal is actually take out the trash and do something with it. Uh, albedo modification is spray perfume over the trash, so hopefully you don't notice it as much. What he said affects all of us. He said something that really hit home about um, this phenomena of chemtrails. And, you know, when I was a kid, I used to see these trails in the sky all the time. And so oh, that's cool. A jet just went over. And then you started to see a whole bunch of them. They're out in full force today. Right where the sun is. You'll notice this part of the sky, completely clear. And then where the sun is. See? Of course, because it's right in the sun, it's difficult to see, but they started doing it again today. They took three days off for some reason. It's only where the sun where the sun is in the sky too. See, all this is clear. Beautiful blue sky. Well silver blue. And where the sun is. They'll really step it up tomorrow because it's gonna be 70. Anyway, they're at it today. They'll, they'll, they do this every day now. By the time I got the camera, though, it's already dissipating, but there's more coming. They'll be doing it all day. 
There's one. It's 12.30 in the afternoon. There's the sun, there's the vapor clouds. With, by the way, the reason they're doing this is to negate the effects of warming. Because the Earth has actually shifted southeast on its axis from the usual 22.3 degrees in most of human history to the current uh, Oh, there's estimates now, but as much as 38 degrees shift now. But of course, only where the sun is. It's so obvious that that's what they're doing. Sun. The aerosols. We need to get a plane in here. So yeah, it's still sunny, but it's an icky sun. There's never going to be truly sunny days anymore. Especially with Hillary Clinton going to be president. Which is better than Trump, but not by much.